it's been quite some time since Fixie got new updates and these updates are really uh, exciting because you can now drive her hair color and also we are going to be talking in this video about the normal editings uh, what the benefits are when we're dealing specifically when we create hair specifically anime hair all right let me remind you that all of the materials that you will see in my videos are available in my gumroad store so you can go there and check out the entire guilty gear stylized shaders for blender so let's start we need to create two basic curves so shift a select curve and a circle curve the circle curve is going to drive the bevel effect of the main curve so you can click the curve enter edit mode and then just manipulate the vertices uh, the vertex points that they have so this is the important part that you need to select your um, bevel curve as I'm showing you here and from there on you can uh, edit the curve so that it can shape or reshape the the main curve with this profile so what's the idea here the idea here is to stylize um, the thickness and stylize the corners, stylize the overall shape to make it look like hair, like many strands of hair. And you can also uh, read the instructions that I'm going to be leaving you here in the screen. Please put pause on the video. This is a uh, rush run and gun tutorial. I don't like to do this kind of video, but um, I already talked about how the algo uh, does not like longer videos. So let's continue and if you select the edit curve to edit the curve you can uh, manipulate it and also you can twist it and you can scale each point to make the curve thicker. Now probably some of you have been always retopologizing hair and it is a big problem here in Blender when you create anime hair and you have an over excessive amount of vertices and faces and 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 it's just a mess you cannot animate that i uh, last year i created a an introduction course for uh hair realistic hair actually and in that course i explained one of the basic principles when you're grooming your hair style is that you need to colorize or you need to define which strands you are going to be working with so please always work with reference and always color code your strands. This is very important so you do not get lost in the middle of the production. Okay, so um, that's one tip. And another tip is that you can use a proportional tool to select your faces in the, in the mesh. And then you can move it with a radio influence. The idea there is to create strands that have their origin point at the root. Okay. That way you can duplicate them and they will be correctly aligned to the skull. Now the next thing you can also use is the, the annotation tool in the screen because this will help you define better areas for the natural hair flow. And if you go to sculpt mode, you also will get uh, relaxing tools. Uh, so you can continue to do your polygon manipulation. So the important thing here again is to make sure that your origin point is always at the center of the head like this. And in case that your hair roots are short, you can uh, press E to extrude them and then continue the editing as it is shown in this part. You can scale, like I mentioned before, all of your curves to accommodate the, the hair strand. So you can press E to continue to extrude or rather you can just grab it and make it a very long and thin strand. I usually duplicate it once I have finished one of the strands which will be the like the top level of the hair because you have like the base and then the secondary layer and finally the detail layer which I call which are the, the longer strands or those kind of hairs which are, you know, flying solo <laughs> in the hair skull. So the next thing that we're going to use is the mirror modifier for each of the curves because we want to make sure that our middle um, origin, it's 
always the face so you can select that as the origin uh, point and the reference point for your curves so once they are mirrored you can also edit them and if you right click on any curve you will get this amazing smooth smooth curves menu which will help your hair look more stylized more easy to read because we want a, an easy to read silhouette now like I, I was mentioning before you get the problem that you get too many subdivisions when you're working with curves which was one of the main problems that uh, most of the artists doing anime had in the past but now I hope that with this video you get the solution so the first thing we need to do is to locate which one is the driving curve for the selected hair object which in our case is going to be this one for animation it is important to lower the polygon count on this anime hair so that's why it's important to take a look at the details that we have right here with these parameters so as you can see here we have many subdivisions and they are uh, mostly going to be editable from the parameter on the geometry which is the UV I'm sorry the U um, parameter so you can see that we are reducing drastically the amount of vertices that we have but we are still maintaining the shape the overall shape of the curve against the other geometry that we have on the hair the basic geometry subdivisions that we have so we do not need that many subdivisions because in the end we want to apply a subdivision modifier and imagine if you already have this kind of subdivisions uh, by far too many faces too many polygons but now if you come here you first reduce the main object uh, the main hair object U parameter and of course you then locate which one is the driving curve profile for the bit for the bevel and then you proceed to go back and find the U value and lower it down to something that looks much better much economical for your polygons and that's it that's everything you need to do in order to manipulate a better uh, topology for your hair and thus you can then continue to refine your hairs using lattices which have the ability to control many different uh, points separated within the geometry as one single um, manipulation tool okay so very important here you please please need to mirror your hair objects because once you work in one side you can always uh, mirror immediately and then you can get results for both sides when you're doing your UVs so now we're going to uh, unwrap them unwrap each part of the hair it needs to be converted to a polygon mesh not a curve please save a file a previous file for this and then save a new file so you can convert every hair object from curve to 3d mesh um, a polygon mesh and after that you uh, select your edges press ctrl e select mark seam and with that uh, in edit mode press u and then u again to unwrap and thus we get this kind of result from the parametric curves and this is not what we want what we want is to uh, open our own hair strands and then I tend to distribute them all over the place like this one because I really want to uh, know with where I'm going to be locating each one of them in um, priority order so I want to show you a nifty little trick you can select your uh, vertex right here uh, horizontally and vertically to be aligned please put pause on the video and read the description the text description select your face and once you select your face um, you need to go and select the rest of the vertices from the same UV that you just opened and then hover on your 3d viewport press F3 and type follow active face follow active quads I think it is this will straighten up your UV coordinates automatically this is a very awesome function that blender 2.9 t has i'm already using 291 but you can find it already on 290 and it is just amazing 
Now let's do the same procedure for the next UV and as you can see we now have straight UVs. One side will correspond to the darker part of the hair and the, the other one will face directly to the light, to the front of the face. So that's why we need to unwrap this, open the UVs and the back side is going to be painted in black, okay? Also, uh, make sure that no UVs are left behind. Make sure that everything is just one big atlas. I'm working with a 2K resolution. You can work with 4K if you want more definitions on your paintings, on your masks, and that's cool. You can select all of the UVs and then go to the UV menu and then uh, click on export UVs. This is very important because we're going to be using uh, we're going to go back and forth from Blender, from Photoshop or Krita if you're using Krita to paint the mask factor that we want to affect with this texture. In this case, I took the, the precaution to mark everything I wanted dark with an X. So I know that everything that is marked with an X, that's the uh, back side of the polygon, in which case I am totally going to paint it black. Okay, I'm going to do a few stylizing uh, shadows here and there, but not many, because most of them have been already aligned with the method I already described. So why is this important? Because this is going to define the area where the shadows are going to be restricting any kind of light. And since we are going to use this as a mask factor, then we can um, multiply it with our threshold or rather find which one is greater than. Although in this specific occasion, because um, this is a, a cool thing to do. Oh, by the way, if you are working with um, images, you can press this option right here, which will allow you to automatically refresh your images. So in the end, your texture looks like this. And the idea there is to complete this um, detailed shader in the longer video okay yeah i'm sorry i cannot give you more than this i think we've already gone through a lot of tips but please rest assured that when part 4 of 4 for the uh, stylized guilty gear shaders for blender come out this is going to be explained in a full detail within the one hour video that i usually tend to um create to explain all of the concepts so as you can see right here, this is the end result. It is just marvelous. This one is one object, one single object. I merged all of the polygon parts. I can directly rig this or I can use each individual part. But I wanted to talk about the normal editing. So I've seen a lot of um, users who tend to use a, a sphere, probably a, a cylinder, trying to recreate normals for hair and I, I don't know how to call it but i think it's too oversimplified when i use that method for example here i'm using a very simplified um, uh, cylinder so that the normals are copied from that cylinder into this this hair and as you can see the hair looks very flat i particularly don't like this kind of uh, style but um you can do it, of course. I will be explaining that as well in the in the longer video. I tend to like this kind of um, uh, details on the hair, which can create shadows and overall a good readable silhouette. So this has been everything. I'm sorry this is a very short video. I hope you liked it. If you have any questions, make sure that you make them in the comment section below. And please do not forget to subscribe to get the notification when part 404 is out. I also want to thank all of my patrons who make this video possible. Thanks to Ovidu Contantinescu, Pochi Wang, Sean, M. Yusuki. And maybe the next Patreon could be you. You will get access to exclusive files and video training to create amazing stuff in Blender. This has been Pierre Schiller. Thank you for your time, and I will see you in the next video. Try Blender. Blender is powerful and beyond industry compatible.